Yeah, the, this is Dwayne Biel with the Neville Times, and here's today's report for Tuesday, September 8th. In last night's coronavirus update, health officials reported one new case for a total of 9,901 on the Navajo Nation as of Monday. The Navajo Nation's 2020 Census Office will partner with the Navajo Nation Gaming Enterprise to co-host three community enrollment events at casino locations. We were blessed with a gift to be a storyteller. But you have to use it the right way. You have to be humble. You have to be sincere about what you're doing. And then you have to be respectful to the people that you tell the stories to and tell the stories of. So you have to be careful with the gift that you've been given. NQA General Manager Walter Huff said this is especially critical with the president. The rest of the world is telling their truths, you know, on behalf of their people, their communities, their their cities, their countries. I feel proud that I'm able to do that for my home. For the Navajo Nation, for the Netcha, Nebekeya. The Corona, I mean, I'm from here. I was born here. This is where I grew up. Noah Grease with Anne Cameron. That is today's report. Thank you for listening, and have a great day, everyone. K-Y-A-T. Update on the census and, and what they're doing with the casinos have converted to census locations. Last week, a group called Indigican did a report on hemp, so I'm going to write about that. So. I'm working on the ultra marathon story. Uh, just writing it out should be done with it soon. So we need to kind of produce a little bit more than what we're used to. And hopefully we can get through this week with no problem. What the Navajo Times means. It means the Navajo people. The Navajo Times means the Navajo people. You never forget that. We are a voice for the people that need to be heard, that should be heard, that want to be heard. We share the happy times and the sad times. We're part of, of letting people know of what's going on in their lives, what's happening at school and their business and their communities. The Navajo Nation is so huge, and our readership is throughout the whole four corners, and then some. Just travel alone, maybe up to 18 hours, to be able to do one assignment. But for me, I have to get out there and try to cover as much ground as I can. My grandmother used to say, you know, um, speak the truth. I'm not a police officer, not EMS, anything like that, but I am a journalist and we do contribute to society, hopefully in positive ways, impactful ways. How's, how's COVID-19 been affecting you? Nowhere to go, no nobody to help you, no family there for us, you know. I think we're just over here on the street just trying to help out each other and, you know, talk, mm -hmm. just talk. And just we were hit hard. The numbers took off right away. People got sick. A lot of people were dying. We said, well, we've got to do our part. We've got to let people know our journalism. It did come down to being like a matter of life and death. People were scared. So I wanted to know what was being done. 
I see the numbers every day and I, I report on it, but seeing those numbers and knowing those are my relatives and knowing that my mom, she knows everybody. She'll say a name and I'm like, are you kidding me? I know that person. I just saw that person. And they're just one of those numbers now of the death toll that I'm reporting on. It's something that's vital for the community to know. They get this information only from the paper. There are people who need water, they need wood, they don't have transportation, they don't have access to the, the cell phone, they don't have access to the internet. They have the Navajo times. When you look at the Navajo Nation and, and some of the conditions that exist out there, a lot of people, when they first see that, they say, you mean this is going on today in the United States of America? I've been trying to talk to a lot of people out there because I want to try to get a message out to the leaders, yeah. It's getting more dangerous out here. I had to lose my family, everything. I'm, I'm a human being, you know. I have feelings, uh, yeah. They really are suffering. They don't have electricity, they don't have food, but they're happy. <laughs> and that's just, man, that just inspires me, you know? Um, I grew up like that. <sighs> I was a wartime veteran. I explored the world. I had a lot of fun out there. I've seen a lot of horrible things too. But eventually, I started missing a lot of things about home. Being able to look through a viewfinder is sort of like a protection, it's a barrier. It gives me a chance to look at the world from the safe angle. It's a journey, and that's where my medicine is. I've had as many as six reporters who are down now to like four. They are true warriors for the people by staying close to their jobs, by doing their jobs, by performing to the best of their ability. We have a duty to fulfill, a duty to the Navajo people. As long as we have that duty, we'll continue to come to work and perform that duty. And one way to do that is to be informed, to understand that, okay, these are the issues. These are what Congress is talking about. They're Diné, they're Navajo, and they deserve to be told the truth. past couple of years was when the uh, newspaper industry has been going down a lot. Always looking for young Navajos to train and to learn how to work for the people's newspaper. Only problem is they're hard to find. They're really hard to find. So I have Tufa Works. He opened his own art gallery during the pandemic. Um, with DOJ from Washington, Charles Galbraith, I think his name is, he's gonna be in this week. Yeah, and then also, um, I just wanna let everyone know that uh, I um, will be leaving. And I got a job at the Texas Observer, so I'll be moving to Austin in January. Our newsroom is transitioning, like, you know, Monday, one of the reporters said she's leaving. This is a Navajo Nation necessity. Our paper is a necessity, and I think people don't really recognize it until it's gone. So we could be looking for two new people, which is fine. That's what we gotta do, we'll do it. A lot of people don't understand what it takes to publish this newspaper. The paper takes a life of its own. 
You've got your own sweat, you've got your own emotions, you've got your tears, you've got your laughter. All those emotions, human elements, go into putting this newspaper together. I wanted to write something, and I'm still working on it, for like having to do with some of the things that have happened over the last few weeks in regards to the violence that's taken place and then kind of put a local spin on it because there's stuff that's happening that people aren't really aware of, you know. I mean, you know, all these things where people are getting shot and killed by police and stuff. Well, it happens here all the time. It happens and people don't know. You know, there's things going on with our police department, there's things going on with, you know, social services and people just disappear and die. Nobody knows where they are. It got to me this afternoon, so. It's been on my mind. So. You need to get out of here. Yeah. So I'll see you guys too. Okay. Yeah. Right down. Okay, see you. A big part of our philosophy here at the Navajo Times is that we incorporate a lot of our own traditional teachings, our customs, our language into our journalism. Navajo politicians, have they come to you? Being here is home, and I could never imagine writing for any other people besides my people. They have so much knowledge, they have so much things that I can learn from, and they're willing to teach me. Just like they need their groceries or their lard and stuff for their fry bread, they gotta have the Navajo time so they can have their news. We're, we're that much a part of life. Yeah, that looks good. Good stories. The people need help. As long as I'm still capable of doing things, I'm gonna get out there and try to help any way I can. They need a voice. I don't want my name to be remembered, but I want the stories I've told to be remembered.